Um, so I'm going to kind of talk about Red Cross as just kind of the big organization of what we do. And then I'll kind of tailor it down to what it looks like that we do here locally within Maricopa County and also within Sun Cities. Um, and all West Valley cities. So the mission of the American Red Cross is to prevent and alleviate human suffering in the face of emergencies by mobilizing the power of volunteers and the generosity of our donors. A lot of our uh, funding comes through the donations that we receive. When people donate, they can um, put it towards maybe one big, huge disaster that might have just occurred, or they can kind of put it in the big bucket of money for Red Cross to use as needed to service the clients and the communities that we're, we're helping out after big emergencies. In 2023, the climate crisis took a devastating toll on families in our country. It sparked a record number of billion dollar disasters. But people like you answered the call to help through the American Red Cross. Your support made our life-saving mission possible. You helped provide shelter, food, and hope. Someone with a Red Cross jacket on came to the area where my parents used to live and actually paid attention. Those little things, are, those are tangible things that make a difference. Because you don't know what you got till it's gone. On behalf of those we serve, thank you. We are grateful for your support. All right. So as I mentioned, Red Cross, it's a huge organization. And American Red Cross is within the United States. We do have Red Crescent that services other countries. And a part of all of that, our big parent organization is the International Federation of Red Cross. So we put out humanitarian services all over the world. Um, here in the US, we also not only have the disaster relief part of things that we do, um, but we also have blood that people, we receive donations, give it out to the hospitals, and then people can have those blood transfusions as needed. Uh, training services, we offer training in um, babysitting courses, in uh, aquatics, and um, hands-only CPR, AED, and you can get certifications for those. And that's for adults, children, babies as well. And then we have uh, services we provide to the service um, of the armed forces. So Red Cross provides critical assistance and resources to service members, veterans, and their families. And then we also have our international services. So with the international services, um, the Global Red Cross and Red Crescent, as I had mentioned, um, that whole network, they support our partners in responding to and recovering from disasters and building healthier communities. And every day we have an impact across the US, which is great. So 170 times a day, we help a family affected by a disaster. You'll see in one of the next slides that that is one of the most common disasters that we have nationwide. It happens within like every seven minutes or eight minutes, we're responding to a home fire. And a lot of times people may be displaced from their homes. It could be temporary and it could be for a longer period of time. The fire department gives us a call and we respond and we'll have a team go out and provide some services, some um, comfort items, and then financial assistance if people are being displaced from their home for a period of time. Uh, we also have um, 1,500 times a day, uh, we provide services to military families. 1,300 times a day, wait, 13,000 times a day, um, a person receives life-saving Red Cross training. And we have apps that I'll go ahead and show as well. And with that, you'll we've already put out a million uh, weather alerts that the Red Cross has sent to let people know about hazards in their community that may be something that we're monitoring or fast approaching hazards. Hazards that we do face, like you'll see, is home fires, earthquakes, hurricanes, floods. A lot of the most common ones that we experience here in Arizona are wildfires, of course, extreme heat, um, and then flooding, home fires, and winter storms in more of the northern area, and then thunderstorms that come along, especially during monsoon season. So the odds are that disasters will strike. Uh, they happen often and sometimes without warning. Um, they can affect any community, so it doesn't matter who we are, where we came from, they happen, and we have to figure out how to prepare ourselves and also how the community is going to respond in that effort. So they always say the first 72 take care of you because um, 
all of the first responders are going to be very overwhelmed with trying to meet the needs of the community, assessing the situation and developing any sort of plans that we need to locate places to put people in safe, um, to get them safely uh, in a shelter or in a um, safe environment of whatever that, whatever that looks like. So um, we typically see disasters overwhelm response systems, people are hurt and then um, buildings, property is usually damaged or destroyed, which is when people are displaced. So we do help um, with disasters, big and small. Sometimes we are out for a very long time um, when it comes to like the Hawaii wildfire that we recently experienced. Many people from the Red Cross that are on the mainland weren't out there to volunteer and they were out there for at least three weeks or longer and some of them didn't have, you know, comfort living situations, but they were there to help and to get people the services that they needed. A lot of those folks ended up in hotels. So the hotels were, you know, totally packed with families, their pets, and we provided any sort of comfort and items that we needed. We worked with our community partners to provide hot meals, snacks, water, and we do damage assessments. So then we can figure out what sort of financial assistance we can provide to those families. So we are there in some of the darkest moments. So we provide uh, the basic needs like food and shelter, cleanup supplies and comfort items. So we'll have cleanup kits we bring out depending on the type of disaster. It may be tarps, it may be um, a whole bucket full of like gloves, um, safety gear and cleaning products. It could be shovels and the, yeah, I don't know. The world's your oyster with that one. It just depends on the disaster. Um, and then financial assistance, health and mental health care is also provided through um, our trained volunteers. Many of them may be already licensed counselors. Um, we have licensed nurses. So they also step up to help us meet the needs of our clients that we're serving. And like I had mentioned, home fires are one of the most common um, disasters that we respond to. So every day, seven people die in U.S. home fires. Uh, as responders, we wanted to change the odds, and that's why we launched our Sound the Alarm program. So we have already installed two mil over 2 million um, new smoke alarms and responded to almost a, a million um, home f households that we've made safer, actually. So we also monitor any sort of um, smoke alarms that we install into people's homes and then we're able to get reports that show which of those homes actually did have a home fire and we can see how many people lived in that home and the impact we were able to make by getting there early putting in those smoke alarms before that fire happened so that way they were properly alerted it's very common that some people don't have any smoke alarms in their home maybe they have one or two that still work but in the um in the in the desert out here where we live, it's best to do a, a, get a new um, smoke alarm between eight to 10 years because the sensors inside of those smoke alarms can gather that dust and they'll be less effective over time. Um, people don't often check their smoke alarm, so it's good to do that at least once a month. If you can't reach it because it's way high up on the ceiling, I always suggest using a broomstick and just poking that button going to alert everybody in the home, but that's how you know that it's working. So as I mentioned with the sound the alarm, uh, we do big events and then we also do um, appointment requests that we'll go out to. So um, we do have a QR code on this PowerPoint that you can scan with your camera and then it'll take you to the page where you can just insert your information online with just your name, your address, time of day and days of the week that would work best for you. And then we will go ahead and notify our volunteers and they will go into your homes and they will do those smoke alarm installations. Upon request, we also do bed shaker um, installations, so that way it will be alerted by the smoke alarm that is going off and it will put a, it'll um, begin vibrating and it's typically under a person's pillow and so then that way they can feel it and they can wake up. These are for people who have somebody in the home or multiple people in the home who are deaf and hard of hearing will provide this service as well. So how the American Red Cross supports your community. Our local chapter office is in the Biltmore area, so it is off of Camelback Road and 22nd Street in Phoenix. We participate every year in exercises that are hosted by our local jurisdictions and the municipalities to improve any sort of planning for real world events. The exercises will focus on power outages, wildfires, floods, mass casualty incidents, 
uh, nuclear release from Palo Verde Generating Station, and the list goes on and on with those. We take um, into consideration vulnerable populations, emergency evacuations that lead from a short term to more of like a long term, term um, shelter operation. Uh, transportation plans in case there's people in the community that might not have transportation access, then we'll make sure if we need to um, find some local resources or if we need to partner with Valley Metro and call them and they will come out and help get people to a safe location. Uh, we also take into consideration household pets and livestock. We will find a place where um, livestock can go and typically the pets are either co-located there at our shelter facilities or um, we'll have another location and the Arizona Humane Society helps us with the pets. Um, and so we do collaborate with community partners to learn about resources that we have locally and we're always communicating any sort of new um, resources that we may have. Um, as people get grant funding, certain items and resources become available that may not always be available year round. And so as soon as they are finding out that they got the money and they have these resources now, they share it with our network. So we always know who we can call on in a time of need. We practice simulating shelters and we do those internally and externally when we're working in those big exercises. But internally, um, we do those as well on a routine basis just to make sure we're always ready. Our volunteers, we can quickly mobilize our resources, our, um, our, our stuff, which could be cots, our blankets, toiletries, um, and then making sure we can quickly identify a facility in the area. Um, upon request, we do train the city parks and recreation staff, public health staff, CERT volunteers, and this is all on our shelter fundamentals training. So this helps equip them with the skills and the knowledge that they would need to stand up a shelter on their own if they ever wanted to um, support their community in that way. Sometimes there are very big disasters, which could cause us to need multiple shelters to be open. And sometimes it takes a little while uh, to get some folks from across the country to come here. So we'll be depending on, okay, we'll be depending on our uh, workforce locally first before we call in reinforcements. So where will you go if a disaster strikes? Depending on the emergency event, a safe location is identified as soon as local emergency management personnel evaluate the risk and reported hazard and what it poses to the community. So Red Cross will open emergency evacuation centers, will open cooling and heating centers, and will also open up overnight shelters for days, weeks, or months, depending on the emergency event. We provide assistance with medication replacement, reduce, um, and helping with our, our counselors will help reduce some stress and talk people through some of those traumatic incidents. Caseworkers will provide some of those um, immediate resources people might need to kind of tap into the community and help look for housing options if they're gonna be displaced for a long period of time or permanently. We do have multiple apps that you can use, um, which are really, really great. So we have an emergency weather app and we have a first aid app and a pet first aid. Here's some of the information that each of them have. So there are alerts and the explanation of what the alerts are in the emergency app. First aid, it talks about a bunch of things, fractures, how to treat burns, how to treat um, bites, stings, asthma attacks, and then even for pets, how to perform CPR on them, how to treat them if they've been in a car accident, if they've drowned, ex experienced any sort of poisoning, things like that. It'll talk you through what steps to take, and then of course, point you to getting veterinary assistance. And we do recommend that at least one person in the home be trained in CPR, first aid, and AED to make sure that anybody in that home, whoever experienced a cardiac event um, or any sort of drowning instance can be um, assisted right away. Here is a, um, the smoke alarm a QR code for that online website. You can also give us a call. The number's available on some of the flyers that are out on our table, but you can give us a call at that phone number and you can leave your name, leave your address, and a time frame that works for you. And we will go ahead and share that with the volunteers closest to your area who do those installs. So thank you for the time that you guys gave me today. I hope that you guys learned a little bit about what we do at Red Cross, but also there is um, some information at our table about some of those major hazards. And so that way you can figure out how to prepare for your household and meet your business needs.